Well, good Wednesday morning, everybody, and it is September 22nd. Um, we are on the, and quite by coincidence, we are starting at the 22nd verse and, and going to the 30th verse of the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Isn't that a coincidence? There are, there are no coincidences, as they say. Uh, but no, we are today in John chapter 3, verse 22 through 30. And um, we have gotten done with the dialogue with Nicodemus, and now we are moving on with the story of John. So, and it's just and the story of John, actually, in John. So, um, here we go. This is talking about Jesus and John the Baptist. We're just going to jump right into it today. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptizing. John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem, Salem, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except that what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of you, of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. I have been sent ahead of him. I'm sorry. Um, so, um, this is taking place on the, uh, on, the, on the west side of the Jordan. Previously, they were on the east side of the Jordan, uh, baptizing in the Jordan River on the east bank. But now they've moved. We don't know exactly where. Um, there's there's ideas, but uh, Inan means springs. So it's in an area where there are springs for spring water. Um, they they preferred method of baptism, and in fact, in the Didache, if you read in the Didache, the way you're supposed to baptize is in cold living water, running water. So it wouldn't be running or would be wouldn't be baptizing by the Christian sense in standing water, though the, the Jewish people use baptismal pools, um, but here, it's an area where there apparently are some springs. They have a rough idea where it's at. Um, it would be, uh, Nazareth would be to the north of it and a little bit to the west. Uh, and Jerusalem would be to the south and more to the west. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, one here, one here, and this is over here. Sort of kind of thing. It follows the Jordan. It's near the Jordan. It's an area where there are springs. Again, not 100% agreement on exactly where at it is mm -hmm. at. Um, but uh, but they have a rough idea, and it is on the it would be to the west of the Jordan is where they're at. Um, so they're not that far. Uh, I mean, it's not that far from uh, everything. One of the things about going to the Holy Land, you know, we go up here in the Midwest, everything's forever apart, you know, and we're used to driving long distances. Um, it's not a big deal. You go to the, you go into Israel, and everything's close. All of these things you hear about and talk about is that to us they're very close uh, the, the distances are not great distances compared to what we're used to being right here in the in the flyover country as the folks on the east and west coast call us um, but to hear you know it's nothing for for us to drive for for an hour to get anywhere and to drive two hours is not that you know it's not an unheard of thing by any stretch you know gail and i commonly will go to omaha on a weekend uh, just to go and do some to visit someone or to do some business for gail's business or we might run to des moines both of which are you know at, uh, you know, Omaha is about two and a half hours. Des Moines is not quite so far, but but we're used to in this part of the world driving great distances. In the Midwest or in the Middle East, these places are close compared to what we're used to. That's that's what I'm trying to say. So here, though, the important part about this is John's testimony about Jesus. Again, he's repeating again that that I am not that one that is important. I'm going to become less and less and less. He's going to become greater and greater and greater. And that is the point of it all. It's the focus is, John's saying, the focus is on him. What I'm doing is just merely preparing the way, preparing you to come to him. So that's the message there. And we need to remember that when we're, we're out doing, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me, um, when we're out doing ministry, we want to remember it's not about us. 
It's not about, and whether we're doing something, if we see someone else doing something that's much bigger and bolder and, and more, more splashy, so to say, splashy about baptism. I was a, ha ha. Anyway, um, we shouldn't lose heart because we don't know the importance of what we're doing by any stretch. Just because we're only dealing with twos or threes, maybe, or even ones, that we don't know what the lays ahead for that one. You know, when we're in a class teaching children, especially, and I really try to, you know, promote and, and, and talk about that we need to be focused on the children. Uh, and I do tonight, I coincidentally, it's youth group. I'll be over with dealing with the, the boys that I've got, fifth and sixth grade boys that I deal with, um, and love that. I love working with those kids. But I don't know the, you know the impact that I have on any of those one you know of those children. I don't know what it's going to take them down the road. Some of them may leave the church and come back just simply because of the of the influence that, that someone had, not necessarily me, that someone had on them during their, their time in the youth group. And I can't worry about whether it's you know spontaneous or it happens immediately or all of those things. We are just to be there again, doing the, do the work that God sent us to do. John's there doing the work that God sent him to do to prepare the way for Jesus. So let us be like John, prepare the way for Jesus. Okay, And that's what I've got for you today in this section. Tomorrow we will end the third chapter, and uh, Friday we'll start chapter four. All right? So with that, I'm going to let you go. Uh, have a wonderfully blessed day. Enjoy it. It feels like fall out there. You got to love fall, even though it does bring allergies and all of those wonderful things. And my, my sinuses don't love me in the fall. I'm not loving me this morning either. But that's just part of living in the Midwest where we, we do love it. Yeah, we, lo we love having our four seasons. So God bless you. And please, please be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.